from the studios of Tucson Business Radio X, recorded in the Stewart Title Corporate Offices on Broadway. You are now listening to The Mark Bishop Show. And now here's your host, Mark Bishop. My guest is Neil Barnard, MD, nutrition researcher, and New York Times best-selling author. His new book reveals how foods balance hormones, improving diabetes, infertility, metabolic issues. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. It's great to be with you today. Well, folks, I've asked the good doctor to talk about how food, yes, food and hormones play a powerful role in fertility and menopause, sex hormone-related cancers, balancing the thyroid, type 2 diabetes, and regulating metabolism. You know, he is the only physician who has conducted breakthrough research on how foods influence hormones and the problems that they can cause. Now, we all know somebody, right? So, you know, it's a lot of good advice coming up. Now, your new book, Your Body in Balance, is a bestseller, Dr. Barnard. It must have struck a chord, as they say. Well, I think it's surprising to people to think that foods could actually control your hormones and that, in turn, that means maybe your menstrual cramps will go away or infertility or erectile dysfunction could improve or, or cancer could even be less likely. Th- those are... For many people, they don't really connect those dots. But what we have found is that foods do, in fact, get our hormones in balance, and it gives you more power than you otherwise would have. Well, we live in an age where, you know, every five seconds I get an email for which uh, tablet is going to fix every one of the problems. And what we're talking about here is going right back to the beginning. And I think there's a lot in what you say. I'm actually looking forward to reading the book. No doubt there's a science behind how common conditions like infertility, weight gain's a big one, menopausal symptoms, breast, and a very, very important one today, prostate cancers, along with thyroid problems, even acne. They're fueled by hormones that are hidden in or influenced by the foods that we eat, correct? Yes, and let me give you an example for how this works. Um, there's a, there, there was a woman named Catherine whose story I describe in Your Body and Balance. She was in the Air Force. She was an Air Force aerospace engineer. And as time went on, she started to gain some weight. Uh, she was frankly tucking into macaroni and cheese and that kind of stuff a little too much. Uh, she started gaining weight, and she ends up having abdominal pain that wouldn't go away, and it got worse and worse and worse. And the doctor uh, examined her, and she, it turned out that she had endometriosis. Mm. This is a condition where you have cells that have leaked out of the abdomen and they're uh, leaked out of the uterus and they're all around the abdomen implanting and they also cause infertility. And as time went on, medical treatments were not helping and the doctor said, well, our, your solution is going to be a hysterectomy. Now, she didn't want to do that because she and her husband were newlyweds and they hadn't raised their family yet, but she wasn't getting better. So she, she ended up scheduling the hysterectomy. Mm. But before she could have it, she did the diet approach that I describe in the book, which is to throw out all that cheese and so forth, getting away from animal products, keeping oils really low. Six weeks went by, and the day for the procedure arrived. The doctor opened her up, looked inside, and he just closed her back up. And an hour later, she woke up in the recovery room, and the doctor said, I didn't do the, the hysterectomy. You still have your uterus because your endometriosis is gone. And the doctor couldn't understand how could this be. Um, she, she never had the procedure. She now has three kids. Um, And the reason is the diet changes that she made during that six-week period. She threw out animal products. She kept oils very low. That gets her estrogen back into balance, and it stops the endometrial cells from growing. And you can use the same approach for regular cramps, for things like hot flashes, and men can use it to improve their fertility and and their sexual function. Mm. I oh, gee, uh, from what you're saying, I, I wonder how many uh, surgeries went on that perhaps were needless. I got to tell you, it's it's one of the more crushing parts of medical practice to discover how many of our colleagues are doing things that really would not have had to be done. I mean, obviously, things like coronary artery bypasses and stenting, mm. um, which are huge money makers for hospitals, but we wouldn't need them to nearly the extent that we do now if people would eat healthier diets. Now, I grew up in Fargo, North Dakota. And every day of my life, it was roast beef and baked potatoes and corn. <laughs> um, but the meat, the, 
the, uh, on special occasions, it was roast beef, baked potatoes, and peas. But um, I, I have to say that I've learned that this meaty diet is what causes a lot of the problems that we have. Mm-hmm. God, everything you've mentioned, I love. You know that? Um how do the foods? Well, the good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's even worse because. Uh, yeah, the, the... <laughs> Go on. <laughs> no, I was going to say the good news is that although we're throwing out some of our family favorites like the roast beef and so forth, everything you replace it with is going to be way better um, than what what you're eating before. If if you go to the Italian restaurant, you have the Alfredo sauce on your spaghetti. Now have the tomato sauce instead, um, or the arrabbiata sauce. If you go to a sushi bar. Instead of fish sushi, have the cucumber roll or the asparagus roll or the sweet potato roll. There, there's plenty of choices out there. Mm. Instead of meat chili, have bean chili. And when your body is in balance and you're losing weight naturally and your cholesterol comes down, you just want to keep putting the right fuel in your tank. Yeah, well, you do. You know, you're a new person. So what are some of the benefits of fiber then? Well, fiber is part of what regulates hormones. Your, your liver is filtering your blood every minute of every day. And in a woman's body, the liver pulls out estrogen and it sends it into the intestinal tract so that that excess estrogen can be removed and get her back in balance. If you, let's say your lunch was an omelet. Well, eggs don't have any fiber. Or you ate salmon. Salmon doesn't have fiber either. It's not a plant. Then you end up reabsorbing that estrogen back from your digestive tract and that's bad. So if you put in the beans and vegetables and fruits, their fiber escorts that estrogen out of the body. So in a word, fiber helps you get rid of the excess hormones so you can get back into balance. Hmm. But I'm hearing, you know, uh, without being sexist, I mean, is this more female-oriented than male? Um, Well, for men, uh, let me mention that one of the most overused medications on the planet is Viagra and Cialis and and all of their cousins. The guy goes into the doctor and the doctor says, well, you've got erectile dysfunction and the doctor prescribes a medication. And the doctor, the, the patient walks out the door. What the doctor, if the doctor is thinking, the doctor will throw his pen down on the table, race out the door and grab that patient out of the waiting room before he leaves and say, wait, come back in. There's something I forgot to tell you. <laughs> what the doctor forgot to tell him is that the whole reason he has erectile dysfunction is because he has narrowed arteries. His blood flow to his private parts has slowed down so he can't get an erection anymore. So what the doctor has to explain to him is that although Viagra will open that up temporarily, you also have narrowed arteries in the arteries to your heart in all likelihood, and same thing in the arteries to your brain. So you are at higher than normal risk for a heart attack or a stroke, and Viagra won't help you with that. So what the doctor then has to say to the patient is, look, let's just take the next couple months throw the animal products out, keep oils low. And what the patient discovers are two things. Their heart and their brain are getting protected by their lower cholesterol levels. But in many cases, their erectile dysfunction goes away too. Um, So rather than relying on pills, 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 let's see what your body can do with a little help. I think we are getting educated. Uh, Maybe it's a different generation coming through, but... uh... You know, I'm on the other side of the hill now, but uh, pills, 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 you're right. And you're looking for natural ways, this and that and and so on. But, gee, the way. I don't care how old a person is. Mm -hmm. I do not care how old a person is. Um, We can can improve, say, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels with food, and we can reduce the, the prescriptions that people are on to a great degree and sometimes eliminate them completely. Well, there you go. I mean, uh so you're saying animal products? I just thought of something funny. You know, you might get all of your uh, erectile dysfunction uh, fixed and all the rest of it, and next minute you end up with a heart attack, you know, so you've got to be careful, right? <laughs> Listen, how the can... Same, the same diet that improves ED improves the heart, too. Oh, that's good. That's nice to know. Thanks, Doc. Now, how can our listeners stick to nutrition goals? It's not easy. Okay, uh, focus on the short term. Don't make a plan for what you're going to eat forever and ever and ever. Focus on the short term. So the healthiest diet is an absolutely animal-free diet, a vegan diet. So that sounds like a tall order. Uh So take a week. and Yes, take a week. During the week, identify foods that you could eat that don't have animal products. So if you start your day with cornflakes and milk, have cornflakes and almond milk or have some oatmeal or whatever or if every day – for lunch, you have a submarine sandwich with 
meat on it, have the veggie sandwich. Try different foods. Take a week, identify them. Mm-hmm. After a week, you'll have plenty of choices. Put them on a list. Now, get serious. For three weeks, we're going to eat those foods that you've identified, healthy, plant-based foods, vegan foods that you've already identified. And after three weeks, you'll, your life will just feel differently. All so right. Focus so, on so. the short term. And that's all you need. Okay, so get away from uh, animal products. Um, that includes no eggs, uh, no meat, right? Um, and lower oils. Just just to touch on that a little. What are we talking about? Oils. Um, cooking oils um, tend to interfere with uh, well, all oils, whether it's animal fat like butter or cream uh, or vegetable oils. They tend to, to slow down weight loss. And they also tend to increase uh, estrogen levels. Hmm. So we're going to keep oils low too. So, so my two rules, avoid the animal products, keep oils low. All right. Now, um, because we've got to go soon, but I want to ask you what research went into this fabulous book of yours, Your Body in Balance? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, it was in 2003, actually, where the U.S. government gave us a grant to test uh, – a, a diet for type 2 diabetes, and the aim was to see if we can improve diabetes management, and we sure did with the prescription that I just described of avoiding animal products and keeping oils low. The improvement in blood sugar control was 300% better Ugh. than with the best current diet, and shortly before that, we had done another study with Georgetown University's Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology to show that uh, the same kind of diet change could knock out menstrual cramps for many women or improve them along with PMS symptoms. So what we started to discover is that both from our research but also that from other research teams, foods will control your hormones, get you into balance, and then it ends up affecting a wide variety a variety of symptoms. Okay, Dr. Barnard, um, where can I get this book? Where can my listeners get this book now? Well, thank you for asking. It's on all the online services, whether it's Barnes & Noble or Target or Amazon. But if there is a surviving bookstore in your neighborhood, I hope that people will patronize the booksellers. And give them all their right. Business. Okay, fair enough. Now, uh, you're president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. I like that. A faculty member of the George Washington University School of Medicine and a fellow of the American College of Cardiology. Uh, one last question. I know you've got to go. You're a busy man. What about, um, you know, we're into the new year. Yes, it's February, but what about your resolution? For somebody like you, so fanatic on what we eat, is there anything specific? <laughs> well, I have to say, uh, maybe not fanatic, but, uh, but determined to get the word out. And, and my resolution actually is, although I hope that people will pick up this book and learn about it, my, my real resolution relates to kids. And that is I want to get the word out so that children can can take advantage of truly healthy foods so that they're not walking down the same pathway that perhaps their parents had walked mm-hmm. down so that their bodies can get in balance and they can stay healthy. That's lovely. It's probably one of the best things we could ever consider leaving before we leave the planet. It's all very well thinking of all the material things in life, but health is number one. And if you can leave your children with, uh, you know, a new future like that, it's marvelous. Uh, Dr. Neil Barnard, fabulous speaking with you. Um, More information, people would like to read more, you know, sit in their pajamas at two in the morning, worrying themselves sick. (laughs) Do you have a website? We do. It's called PCRM.org. That stands for the Physician's. Committee for Responsible Medicine, pcrm.org. That's fabulous. All right, well, you have a wonderful year. In fact, you've written 19 books, you know. This might be a bestseller, uh, but you have written 19 other books on nutrition and health, and I bet you there's some good gems in those as well. Well, there are also plenty of recipes, so I hope people have fun with it. Ah, there we go. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Neil Barnard. Lovely speaking with you on The Mark Bishop Show. You too. Thank you so much. 